Hi everybody, I'm Donnie Reed from Baker Air Guns, and today I'm going to show you how I set up a gun for field target competition. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to set up a gun for hunter class field target competition, and this would apply to a PCP or a spring gun equally. Hunter class is the most popular class in field target competition, and it's also where I'd recommend you start if you're new to the game. I wrote an article previously explaining the basics of field target, what you need and how it works and so forth, and there's a link to that in the description of this video if you'd like to check that out for a little more info. But today, what I'm going to show you is how to set up the gun and the scope to work to play field target competition. While technically any caliber is legal for field target competition, overwhelmingly the most popular is 177, and that's what I have here. No matter what caliber you choose, you must be under 20 foot pounds of muzzle energy for hunter field target competition as well as open field target competition. If you would like to engage in WFTF competition, however, you must be under 12 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. So, the very first thing I do is test pellets. Now, I make no secret of the fact that I use JSB pellets. Predator International, JSB, whatever you want to call it. I use JSB pellets, and that's in any of the branded types. FX pellets, Air Arms pellets, JSB pellets. It's always one of those. It's a JSB product. And the first thing I do is get as many samples as possible of as many lots as possible of the different potential candidates. For me, that's a 10.3 grain or a 13.43 grain in either the old monster or the redesigned monster. I am very lucky to have the Midwest Shooting Center's 100-yard indoor range available to me, and that's where I do my testing. It makes the environmental influence absolutely negligible. Now, you can do this outdoors, but you don't want to do this on a day where there's 20 mile an hour variable winds. You want to do this on a nice, calm day outdoors. It's now very simple. I shoot group after group after group with all of these different pellets. I might adjust the velocity if I think another pellet, you know, is doing well, but could go faster or whatever the situation might be. But the point is, this process, and the other thing I do is I try different uh, attachments. I try with the air stripper, without the air stripper, with this moderator, with that moderator, with the cone in the stripper this far out, this far in, no, this far out, no, 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 no this far in, and so forth, until I have the most accurate combination of gun, accessories, and projectile that I can achieve. Of course, this must be under 20 foot-pounds. You're looking at my rig for HFT competition. This is a Daystate Wolverine R Standard 177 with a Cytron S3 10 to 50 by 60 IR M, H, F, T, L, M, N, O, P, whatever all this is. This is the mill hash version of the Cytron S3 field target scope. And the reason that this is the scope on here is because this was the best scope that I could afford. I paid my own cash money for this scope. And that's why it's on here. And I would recommend the same thing to you. I would recommend that you buy the best scope you can afford. However, there are minimum requirements in my opinion. 
First of all, you need a graduated reticle. You either need mill dots, mill hashes, MOA hashes, whatever. You need some kind of graduations in your reticle. The reason for that is you are not allowed to dial your scope in hunter class competition. You must use hold over or hold under. You will also absolutely have to have adjustable parallax. That is how you will range in field target competition. However, I do not recommend an adjustable objective type of parallax adjustment. I recommend a side focus or side wheel as you see here. You also absolutely have to have a 10 yard minimum parallax. This competition will take place from 10 to 55 yards. So you need to be able to range in at 10 yards. There is a magnification limit in HFT competition and it's 16 X. And you can put your scope on 16 X. But if your scope does not have a number 16, you must put it on the next lowest number shown on your scope, which can sometimes be 12x. <laughs> Wouldn't you hate to lose four times magnification? Make sure that whatever scope you get, it has a number 16 on the magnification ring. For the rest of this, we need a known distance range where you have access to pretty much every yardage between 10 yards and 55 yards. At the very least, I suggest that you get a range where you can shoot every single yard between 10 and 20, meaning 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, blah, 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 blah all the way every yard up to 20 yards. That's going to be critical for you. After 20 yards, you can get away with every five yards. However, the more precisely you make your dope chart and range wheel, the more precisely you can place your shots, which means higher scores. What you see here is Dennis Baker's quote unquote backyard. He has a shooting range with every yardage marked at 10 yard intervals from 10 to 50. And then he also has a 55 and maybe a 45. I'm not sure with those big targets, but you can see the small ones on the ground. And those are the in-between distances. And those are critical from 10 to 20 yards after 20 yards. It becomes less critical, but it still matters. So I would suggest doing as many in-between distances as you can. What you are seeing now is the target that I use, which is actually a camera focus chart. And you can see in some of these, you have lines that get finer and finer as you increase in number on this chart. And that helps you very much adjust your focus and get to the point where you can adjust the parallax out of your range. These also have about a million precise aim points. So that's why I choose these targets for this process. The next step is you'll need to wrap your parallax wheel in some kind of tape that you can write on with a pen or a marker. This is how you will range targets. You may not use a range finder. You may only use your Mark I eyeball and your side wheel, your parallax wheel to range for targets. As you see here, this is my range wheel. And you can see that I have yardages marked on here. While a lot of scopes have yardages printed on the wheel and the scope itself, these are not precise enough to shoot field target competition. You must do this manually. Now, if you have a wheel with graduations, you have to have a pointer. And what I use is some point on my rear ring. I can line up the wheel with some point of the rear ring. And that's what I use as a pointer. Some scopes actually come with pointers, 
but you need some sort of repeatable point where you can adjust the wheel and know which number you're pointed at. Like I said earlier, you must use hold over or even hold under in hunter field target competition. You are not allowed to adjust your scope at all. So you have to use hold over or hold under. And what is that? That means that you use a point other than the center of your crosshairs to aim at a target and expect to hit it. While apps like Hawk's Chair Gun or Strelock can show you a rough idea of your trajectory and holdovers, there's no replacement for doing it manually. I start by zeroing the gun at 20 yards, point blank range, dead in the middle of the crosshairs, 20 yards. Now, while I do this, I also adjust all the parallax out of my scope I use my pointer from my ring here and I put a line right there and I write 20 next to it. Congratulations, you have just ranged and doped your first yardage. Since you are not going to remember all of your yardages, you might want to write this down. You need to create a dope chart. There are many ways to do this. I personally prefer a diagram type dope chart. You can see here, I draw my reticle. That's what I see in the scope. And I write in the yardages where they go. And the way you determine this is by going to a different yardage, say 10 yards, and I'll aim point blank, meaning the middle of my crosshairs, right at a specific target, and I'll shoot a three or five shot group and see where it hit. And it will not be where I'm aiming. It's going to be low. And I know that. However, I shoot the group and then I take and I keep my good aim on the target I was shooting at. And then I'll count how many graduations low that group is. Say it's a mil and a half. That's 10 yards. Then I'll write that on my dope chart. I'll also... Mark my wheel. I'll make sure the parallax is all the way out at 10 yards, and I'll put my, my mark there, and I'll write 10. And now I have ranged and doped 10 yards. And I repeat this for every yard between 10 and 20, and then at least every 5 yards from 20 to 55. That is how you create a range wheel and a dope chart for your field target gun. By contrast, this is Dennis Baker's dope chart. He doesn't use a diagram like I do. He uses a written dope chart where he writes in how many graduations he needs to hold over or under on his card. Either one works equally well. During this process, you might find that you actually have to use hold under, where say 25 yards is higher than 20 yards when you shoot the group. So now you have a hold under. Some people don't like that, and your point blank zero controls this. If you don't want any hold under, you can use the apex of your trajectory, the absolute highest point that any pellet went in your testing, and zero at that distance, then absolutely everything will be hold over. Now that you have your range wheel ranged from 10 to 55 yards, and now that you have your dope chart created, and the reason I keep touching this to show you my dope chart is because that's where it is. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in the camera very clearly, but after I make my dope chart, I put it on a little tiny round sticker and stick it on the underside of my rear scope cap. So I just flip this up, boop, and there it is. The whole thing's right there, right in front of me. Pretty slick. So anyway, now that you have these two things done, you are ready to go start practicing. And I do recommend that you practice. You'll want to use your holdover points and see if you're hitting where you should at the yardage you should hit at, and so forth. And it might take some adjustment. But I do warn that you be careful. 
the wind, the environment can make a pellet go high or low. So I suggest that you consider the environment before you make any changes to your dope chart or your range wheel. Once you're happy, once you're confident in both, you're ready. You're ready to get out and shoot a field target competition, and that's what I suggest you do. This is one of the most fun games I have ever played in my life. I highly suggest you try it. It's easy, it's fun, and at least in Ohio, there's a lot of places to do it. There's got to be one near you where you can at least go and watch, bring a gun, try it yourself. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you guys like this video, subscribe, share, check out the Baker Air Guns website if you need anything at all. And I thank you for watching. You guys stay tuned, stay safe, and happy shooting. Hi, I'm Dennis Baker with Baker Air Guns. Thanks for stopping by. Click the link below.